Buenas tardes a todos. Vamos a dar comienzo. Let us begin with the uh, fifth uh, session of the day. Uh, I would like to give the floor over to Mr. Manuel Madrid from the GVSIG Association. He will be talking about comp GVC complement management. Thank you so much, Juan. I would like to tell you about uh, a novelty in uh, version 2.0 of uh, GV SIG. We've seen developments in version 1.11 and 1.12, but now there are some uh, novelties because, uh, and, and I think it's worth uh, mentioning it because it's uh, quite uh, powerful. So uh, let me show you a live demo. So uh, I hope everything works will work uh, fine, although I'm sure something will not work as usual. This is uh, the latest version published uh, on Monday this week. This would be GVSIG 2.0.0 RC1. Here we have the uh, complement uh, manager is here. It uh, what are complements? Complements are plugins, generally speaking, i.e., functionality extensions. But complements are also languages, symbols, or other functionalities that may be embedded in GVSIG. The main benefit is that you don't need to wait for a new version of GVSIG to uh, enjoy these uh, improvements. It's like with patches. When we fix something, we can uh, use the uh, software with the repair, so to speak, right away. You don't have to wait to the net following uh, version of the software. Let me tell you a little bit how this uh, tool works and some peculiarities. You go to Tools, Complement Administrator or Manager, and this window pops up with three options, Standard Installation, Install from file or install from URL. Let's look at these individually. Alright, the roll-up has uh, broken, but uh, at least the computer has not crashed, so it's not that bad. Okay, so here we see standard installation. It, ha it refers to the standard installation. What is this? Well, when you install GVSIG, you have two kinds of distribution. Full distribution, including prerequisites or pre-requirements. It also includes some complements that are uh, distributed with this version. And a subset of these complements come with the typical installation, but others that are not installed in this typical installation but are nonetheless available should the user wish to do so. It can be done right away when you install it for the first time or later on. So the complements in this distribution can be installed here using this option, standard installation. Let me show you how it works. We click on Next, GVSIG then reads in the GVSIG installation available complements for installation. It will not only show available complements to install, but also what has already been installed. In You have a list that can be filtered. You have uh, a text box on top, and you have categories on the left that uh, work as filters. And here you have the full list with 
the status of each complement. On the right, you see the type of complement. All the type, all these complements are plugins. On the left, you see green when uh, it is installed. When it has been installed, you can check this again even if it has been installed in case this complement has uh, been broken if you have a white box it means that this complement has not been installed and you can choose either to click on it or not then you see the star that can come with a green dot the star means it's an official complement i.e. it has passed the uh, criteria required these requirements uh, include uh, some uh, documentation and uh, these uh, doc these complements uh, uh, require testing and if it, it, there is no star it means it's not official and let me show you let's try installing the scripting plug-in and uh, Victor talked about this yesterday and I believe he will say a few words on this subject matter in a, a few minutes see we have two available complements uh, we will by we will pick the uh, newest version when we uh, click on the box and you get a check underneath you see exactly what the plugin does so we click on the complement and we then click on next and this will be therefore installed in this case it is not uh, done through the internet so this installation is not online why because as I mentioned this was ready when we installed it the first time when we installed GV sig so it was actually there but it was not active it was it, it's there in your computer ready to be installed but it hadn't been installed of course when you um, add a complement you need to uh, reboot the uh, computer this might take a, a while because the computer has been working all day I have been working all day too so I'm also tired says the speaker here you see that you have a new element in the menu called scripting which includes these three utilities let us move on. The second option would be file installation. Install from file. This is useful when we wish to install something that not is in the standard installation. Why, you might wonder. Well, let us uh, go to the complement menu we have something similar to what we saw earlier this is a package list a complement list for version 2.0 so here we have all of these packages so we can also filter this and we have the scripting framework if we click here a window pops up it's uh, clipped out here because of the uh, uh, view screen and uh, here we see we have access to binaries so we could download this plugin from here I'm going to install another plugin that called GVSIG Educa. It's a GVSIG distribution 
you might know it. It's for education purposes for primary schools and secondary schools. And uh, there is a plugin that can be installed on GVSIG through which we can produce thematic maps. We have two plugins here, and the functionality is divided by in, in two plugins. We can download the binaries here, then uh, through the through GV SIG's uh, package manager, we would have to uh, download the the other part. So we download these files here. I can see that I had already downloaded the, uh, them, so I'm not going to download them again. We do the same with the other uh, package or complement. We'd go click on binary, would download it, and then we would go back to GV SIG. We'd say install from file. As you can read here, it says. GVS, PKI, and PKS files. So these are PKG files. You, you can see this clearer here. It's PKGS and I. The, the, the former are the planning files. PKS would be uh, package sets meaning a, a, a set of packages, a package of packages, if you will. And then I uh, would be for uh, users. Uh, th th this is, is not useful for, for um, users, really. Let's see. I think we downloaded this. Where was it? It's OK. It's here. Fine. This kind of installation is useful when a developer let me say this in using different uh, words. So the complements, the packages, don't need to be uh, downloadable online. Say a developer submits plugins for us to test them. He could submit the, the uh, PKG files that are easily generated uh, through uh, some sources, and we could select them here. I have downloaded version Ten of the uh, thematic map in G V Sig Educa, but let's say somebody, a developer, the developer of Educa, has uh, sent me a newer version of the package. Okay, I can download this in two ways. Go to the uh, package manager and install first a package and then the next or I can very easily select two oh can't oh my apologies this needs to be done via the browser and uh, a big uh, I, I made a mistake I mean in the uh, file system manager and uh, you can perform a compression of the plugin packages. We select the two uh, versions, version 11. I will drag this to the um, to the bin, and uh, I would click. The right on the right button, I would say compress. The name of the file will be resultado. Uh, and this file here is now the input for the package management uh, by file. So now instead. Instead of uh, selecting them one by one, I can use this filter to select them all. So this is a way to select two packages at the same time. We click OK, and now we can look at this zip file. So on the one hand, we see what we have installed, the different packages, and also what can be installed. Here we can only uh, 
we we only have two packages that have not been downloaded yet. So we click next and we see some uh, dependencies have not been solved and this is something that sometimes happens. This is something that it did not take into account when developing those uh, packages. So when we see that uh, this uh, little window, this is a bit upsetting because it might uh, be an evidence of a lack of stability. Well, I I've checked it and well, in general, it, it doesn't bring any any wrong uh, message. Well, we exit the application. We start GVSIC again. It will take some time. And we will see the uh, results. We will see how we have access to the new functions that we have just installed through the uh, install file function. So it aggregates a new element in the document types, themed map, and if we generate a new view, we have created a new menu inside GVSIC. Now we are going to see the third and last option of the package administrator from the URL installation, that is to say remote installation, is full of potential because it allows us to connect to a repository. In that repository, we are going to load the last version of the plugins. So if we want to access to the last um, with good and bad consequences, there is a uh, the, the plugins have a state that can be testing in development, final version. It's not the same to install a final version plugin or a development uh, plugin. Obviously, a developing plugin uh, means that we are installing something that's not uh, always stable. But here we have a, um, a menu where we have two types of option. We can choose this, um, this option where we will guarantee that the packages are compatible. And with this bill, we also have access to the general repository where we will find the last version. And we have also another advantage. We can create a mirror in which we are going to find the binary the binaries so if our main server well we have loaded the binaries well if it's uh, a crashing well we have another place where to download them from and it happened recently with version 1.12 we have had to I use the Russian community and thanks to them we have been able to solve a downloading problem. So the most traditional and classic version is to go to the build packages, we are going to select them and I don't know if you've seen it but here we have lots of things that we can also mark that when we have selected the standard distribution. So when we select install uh, classic install, uh, we will have access to new packages compared to the typical uh, installation. Here we will have all the uh, packages that are currently existing. It doesn't mean all of them because we have other GVSIC uh, developments that have not generated plugin to be installed in uh, this uh, uh, menu. So I will filter Uh, uh, geocoding to install that extension, that plugin on GVSIG 2.0 as I could install any other, obviously. So I we put next and we have a window saying that uh, we are installing this version uh, 
it's a developing uh, version. When we are installing GV6, we never have to install everything because some plugins have not been tested and we might have some conflicts. So we have to do the installation uh, with lots of caution, uh, step by step, and knowing very well what we are installing and bearing in mind that if it's a developing uh, plugin we might have some problem they are not that stable so we are starting with the download this is the only option of the tree for uh, which we have to be connected to the web to internet to make sure that we install plugins from uh, uh, remote uh, uh, a system as you do understand So we again close uh, GV6, we start it, we run it again, and you will see the interface changes. Uh, uh, you will see it's the first, uh, first thing that will uh, strike you when we, when we open it. So that's it for geo codification we have this new tool allowing us to do the geolocalization and the normalization this extension can be installed but it is still not uh, fully checked uh, so if you want to use it you can use it without any problem and I would like to have your feedback on them to know what any bug that might appear. But I just want to warn you, uh, it's still in development. That's it. Well, this is what I wanted to share with you uh, this afternoon. Thank you very much. Any question that you would like to Yes, the, the question is that when we are creating the extension to create plugins, the language that we are using is not always easy to understand. If you're not uh, computer-wise, uh, we have lots of in development, stable, well, lots of words that might not be easily understandable. Well, it is a new development, and obviously we can improve it. Uh, it has already been improved if we compare with the uh, original version. The uh, first interface was even more difficult, but it is true that we tend to use a, a language that for us uh, is very simple, but a, a normal user might not know what a bill means, so it's a suggestion that we'll, we'll have to, to take into account for further uh, development. We have another question in the room. Uh, good afternoon. I would like to know when you're talking about the packaging, uh, the packages that you are installing, I wanted to know if you can install any uh, of them. Well, or is there or is there any uh, component that might destabilize the, the software? Well, in general, in the version 2.0, well, we don't have the, the final version, so we still have to uh, test uh, the installation of those uh, plugin and see if uh, their combination is not uh, leading to a lack of stability in the software. So the final distribution, the standard distribution, will allow you to download only the non-problematic plugin so in the online distribution from url you might find some unstable plugin but right now we have not tried yet to install them at the same time in combination it's great because you can install them uh install different plugin at the same time but at the same time it could lead to a uh, lack of stability of balance so now we would like to make sure that well, if you are downloading, well, the plugins, uh, thanks to the uh, 
standardized uh, system, all the, the plugins that you are downloading will be uh, safe. Right now, the, 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 the plugs that are identified with the tag in development are likely to uh, be a problem and if you have installed one could you go backwards could you de-install well right now you have to do it manually uh, it might be interesting to have one of that uh, that function to uh, disinstall uh, the um, the application because you know that from time to time you download an application and when you're using it, well, it's not worth using and you want to get rid of that application. Well, right now you have to go to the to the disk and delete, well, the, the folder because when we install a plugin, we create a folder. So we should delete that folder. Uh, which folder? Well, the folder is decided by, is created uh, here. You can see it here. You see, well, the number of the folder that is created for uh, this new uh, plugin. This is the one where you have to go and uh, delete that folder by hand. Thank you very much, uh, Manuel. And one more time, because of time, well, I invite you to ask a question to Manuel during uh, the next uh, coffee breaks and now we are going to give the floor to Victor Acevedo is going to talk about scripting in GVSEC. Uh, 